Welcome to Transmission Gone Viral, part three, the evolution of the virus. So how do new viruses occur? And how might something like COVID-19, or SARS-CoV-2 to give it its proper name, have entered our world? Let's go back to the cell, this time in an animal cell, in a pangolin, a sort of scaly anteater. Its cell is being attacked by a member of the coronavirus family, which causes it a mild disease, just like we might get a common cold. The virus is infecting its cells, introducing its genetic material into those cells and hijacking the cell's own internal machinery to make more virus particles. But wait, what's this? Another virus has just entered the picture. A coronavirus, this time from a bat, possibly. It's also entered the same infected cell. Now, we have three sets of genomes flying around. DNA and RNA from the pangolin host and RNA from the different coronavirus. This is juggling on acid. As the metaphorical dust settles, the RNA reforms and a new virus is created. A virus with a new RNA combination. A bit like shuffling a pack of cards. This new virus is the precursor to SARS-CoV-2. And after a few more changes, or mutations, this virus is now able to infect humans. This new virus then goes on to attack our cells within our bodies. Although what makes this virus even better at infecting our cells is that lipid fat coat with prominent protein spikes. Remember that? Yes, well, this has a modified spike protein that makes it look like a shiny corona or crown surrounding the virus. In the case of COVID-19, or SARS-CoV-2, the spikes are four amino acids longer. And these four amino acids are great news for the virus, but bad news for us, because the virus can infect more efficiently and then multiply more and more until it kills the host cell or until it is defeated by the immune system. In the meantime, plenty of its offspring are coughed, sneezed, wiped or breathed out of our bodies onto another host or onto a surface waiting for a host to just pick it up and smear it across their face. And so the cycle continues. It's not all bleak, however. Our immune system is incredible and will try its very best to identify any virus and eradicate it. Now, some viruses have developed mechanisms to avoid detection. Some mimic host cells and go undetected. Some hide from our immune systems. But eventually, most viruses are surrounded by these vastly bigger and more powerful antibodies and any virally infected cells are killed by our immune system. That way, the virus is stopped. Our challenge is to make sure it is stopped before we transmit the virus to anyone else. And with a virus like COVID-19 that is so highly contagious that one doesn't even show symptoms for up to two weeks, this can be difficult. However, work is happening around the world to help us lower our chances of infection work to create a vaccine which will artificially prime and activate our immune system to give us a much better chance of fighting off the virus. So being positive, how can we stop the spread of COVID-19 or SARS-CoV-2? To find out, you'll have to tune in to our next episode of Transmission Gone Viral, Living with the Virus, where we'll be looking at how governments across the world have been tackling the pandemic. If you can't wait, head over to Highly Sprung's website, www.highlysprungperformance.co.uk, to stream all of the episodes of Transmission Gone Viral. Alternatively, follow at Highly Sprung on all social media platforms for more Gone Viral updates. Transmission Gone Viral is a collaboration between Highly Sprung, Coventry University, 
and the University of Warwick.